1951, a woman named Henrietta Lacks was diagnosed with cervical cancer. Little did she know that her cancer cells would become the most important cells in medical research history, leading to countless scientific breakthroughs and treatments for various diseases. In this video, we will explore the life of Henrietta Lacks, the issues of civil rights in her time, and how cells were used without her consent. Henrietta's cancer cells, known as HeLa cells, have been used to develop the polio vaccine, treatments for cancer, and HIV slash AIDS, and countless other medical advances. Join us as we explore the life and legacy of Henrietta Lacks. What was the social status of colored people in the 1950s? Very, very low. Their social status was not as high as those of white Americans. Just getting the same equal health care. They were used as science experiments a lot. This was due to um, just a lot of prejudice and a lot of racism. African American men and then the women, and they had very few little rights and even education. Henrietta Lacks was born on August 1st, 1920 in Roanoke, Virginia. She grew up in a small town called Clover. Her parents were tobacco farmers and her mother died when she was just four years old. Henrietta eventually moved to Turner Station, Maryland, where she met and married her husband, David Lacks. They had five children together. For her cancer diagnosis, Henrietta worked as a tobacco farmer and a homemaker. She was known to be a happy, lively, and caring person. However, her life was impacted by the societal injustices at the time. When Henrietta was diagnosed with cervical cancer, she received treatment at John Hopkins Hospital. Because of the color of her skin, Henrietta was placed in a segregated ward that lacked basic medical resources. Despite these challenges, Henrietta remained strong and resilient. However, her treatment at the hospital would have lasting effects on her and her family. What kind of health care did they get? Um, usually from a doctor of their own ethnicity. I would assume that the health care they received was probably not as good as what they deserved. White doctors really didn't want to fool with them. I'd say health care was pretty poor, except for maybe, maybe folk medicine. All the experiments with vaccines that they weren't always honest about. Do you think it was legal at the time to not tell a patient about their disease? I'd say it's probably legal, especially if they saw you as less than. Was there segregation going on in the hospitals at the time? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it was happening all over the country, so I would say yes. So much. And they were probably poor quality as well, like not getting as much stuff. I think it was uh, Topeka, Kansas versus the Board of Education. I think that's the name of the case. But even after that Supreme Court case, many states refused to uh, integrate. I bet hospitals were definitely segregated. Could doctors take a sample of a patient's cells for research without knowledge of the patient? Yes, and I would say they did it way more than we realize. I don't think it would be ethical or legal, but I imagine doctors would probably be able to do that easily without the patient's knowledge. I wish, it, I wish it had been better, but we can't change it. We can only learn from it. The 1950s were a time of great social change in America, with the civil rights movement gaining momentum. However, despite the efforts of many activists, segregation and racism persisted, and this had serious consequences for people like Henrietta Lacks. When Henrietta's cancer cells were taken without her consent, it was a clear violation of her privacy and autonomy. To make matters worse, her family was never informed of the use of her cells in medical research. The unethical treatment of Henrietta Lacks and her family highlights the systematic racism that existed in the medical field and in society as a whole. However, the HeLa cells pr proved to be invaluable to medical research, leading to countless scientific breakthroughs and treatments for various diseases. 
Scientists were able to reproduce Henrietta's cells in large quantities, allowing them to conduct experiments that would have been impossible otherwise. The legacy of Henry de Lax lives on today, as scientists continue to use her cells to make new discoveries and develop life-saving treatments. However, it is important to remember the woman behind the cells and the injustice she faced. The use of Henry de Cells without her consent was a clear violation of her rights and a product of the systematic racism at the time. If Henrietta were alive today, her life would be different as medical research has become more transparent and patients' rights have been strengthened. However, there is still work to be done to address the lasting impact of racism and inequality in our society. Henry de Lac's story serves as a reminder of the importance of fighting for justice and equality for all. Henry de Lac's cells will continue to be a vital tool in medical research, but we must also remember that her as a person and honor her legacy by advocating for greater transparency, respect for patients' rights, and the eradication of systematic racism in all its forms. Thank you for joining us on this journey to learn more about Henrietta Lacks and her impact on the world of science and medicine. Well, that's all from me. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell. See you next time. Peace.